OK, welcome to the answers to the arithmagons that I handed out in class. Just to briefly explain what an arithmagon is, it's a puzzle that uh, tests you on adding and subtracting fractions. The one I handed out is about addition. So what you need to do is use the information in the circles to fill in the squares. So in this instance, you need to add a third to a half to find out the solution for this square here. OK, so as we discussed in class, adding fractions, I'm going to add a half to a third, but I need to find a common denominator, something both two and three go into. And that number would be six. So what we need to do is recreate our problem and force our denominators for both of our fractions to be six without actually changing their value. So this involves equivalence. So if I've gone from two to six, I've multiplied it by three. So what I need to do to the numerator to keep it exactly the same as a value is multiply that by three. So one times three is three. So three over six is an equivalent fraction to one over two. So we haven't changed the value. We're just changing the denominator and numerator to allow us to add them together. OK, let's put the plus sign in there and let's do the same for the third. So to get from three to six, I had to multiply it by two. So I need to do the same for the numerator and multiply it by two. So one times two is two. So the fraction two over six is exactly the same value as the fraction one over three. However, it now allows us to add like with like, apples with apples. So I've got three over six and I add two over six and it gives me my answer for my first box as five over six. Let's look at the next fraction that we need to add. I've got a half and a quarter. So I need to add one half and one quarter. OK, again, it's apples and oranges. I can't add them together. So I need to find a common denominator. And that common denominator could be four. That's the lowest common denominator that two and four go into. So now I need to change my fractions into fractions that have a denominator of four. Well, as far as a quarter is concerned, it's not changed, so I can leave it as a quarter. OK, so really, it's just the half we need to change into quarters. So going from two to four, I've multiplied it by two and I need to do the same to the numerator. So one times two gives me two. So two over four or two quarters is the same fraction as one half, the half that we had here. The value hasn't changed. We're just rewriting it with a denominator that allows us to add. Now I can add them together. Two quarters plus one quarter gives me my missing answer of three quarters. OK, finally, our last problem is we need to add one third and one quarter. So let's have a look at that. I have a third and I need to add one quarter. However, I can't add apples and oranges. I need to make them the same. So we're looking for something they both go into, a common denominator. In this instance, it's 12 is the number we're looking for. So the denominator becomes the number 12 and we're going to add them together. Let's have a look at what we've done. How did I get from three to 12? Well, I multiplied it by the four. Therefore, I need to multiply the numerator by four as well. So four over 12 is exactly the same fraction as one over three. It's just been rewritten with a denominator of 12. Let's see what we've done with the quarter. Well, the four has been multiplied by three to give us the 12. So we need to do the same with the numerator and multiply one by three to give us our three. Now we can add them together. I have four twelfths, which was our one third, and I have three twelfths, which was our one quarter. And that gives us seven twelfths. So our answer in here is seven over twelve. Let's look at our next arithmogon. 
we have two thirds and we need to add it to one fifth. So two thirds, we're going to add it to one fifth. Again, we need a common denominator. And the first number they both go into is the number 15. So our denominators are going to be 15 for this problem. How did I get from three to 15? Well, I multiplied it by five. So I need to do the same to my numerator. So two times five is 10. So two thirds is exactly the same fraction as 10 over 15. It's just been forced to have a denominator of 15. Let's have a look at our one fifth. How did I get from five to 15? I multiplied it by three. So to keep the value of our fraction the same, we need to multiply the one by three, the numerator, to get three over 15. And now we can add like with like. 10 over 15 plus 3 over 15 gives us 13 over 15. Let's have a look at the next problem, which is 2 thirds plus 2 sevenths. So I've got 2 thirds and I need to add 2 sevenths. What is common to 7 and 3? Well, it's the number 21. That's the first common denominator, the first thing they go into. Let's put them both as fractions over 21 and see what we get. So to get from 3 to 21, I have to multiply it by 7. Therefore, I need to do the same to my numerator. So 2 times 7 is 14. So the fraction 14 over 21 is the same value, it's equivalent to 2 over 3. Let's have a look at the 7. How did I get from 7 to 21? Well, I multiplied it by 3. Therefore, I need to do the same to the 2 to keep the value of the fraction the same. So 2 times 3 is 6. So now I can add them together because I'm adding apples to apples. So 14 plus 6 is 20, and that's over the denominator of 21. Let's look at our final problem to solve in this arithmeton, which is one fifth plus two sevenths. So one fifth plus two sevenths. We need a common denominator. Well, the first multiple that you come to that they have in common is 35. Five times seven is 35. So our denominators for our problem are both going to be something over 35. And we're going to add them. So how did I get from 5 to 35? Well, I multiplied it by 7, and we have to do the same to the numerator. 1 times 7 is 7. So 7 over 35 is the same value as 1 over 5. It's just been written differently. Let's have a look at the 2 over 7. How did I get from 7 to 35? I multiplied it by 5. So I need to do the same with the 2. So 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 over 35 is the same fraction as 2 over 7. It's just been written in a different way that allows us to now add them. So our denominator is 35 and 10 plus 7 is 17. So 17 over 35. Whenever you write an answer to a fraction, always check to see if you can simplify it. In other words, divide the numerator and the denominator by a number that goes into both of them. In this case, I can use the fact that 17 is a prime number to say, well, 17 doesn't go into 35, and because it's a prime number, I can't simplify it, and it saves times in exams. Okay, our last arithmeton on the worksheet was probably the most complicated, and it involves four answers. So let's have a look at the first question, which is two fifths plus one eight. So I have two over five and I need to add one over eight. Well, in this case, the lowest common denominator is going to be 40. So we're going to force our denominator to be the number 40 and we're gonna add them together. So you have to work out what did I do to get from 5 to 40? I multiplied it by 8. Therefore, my numerator, I need to multiply by 8. So 2 times 8 is 16. 
So 16 over 40 is the same fraction as 2 fifths. It's just written in a different way. And let's have a look at 1 eighth. So 8 to 40, I had to multiply by 5. So I need to multiply my numerator by 5. So 1 times 5 is 5 to keep the same value. So 1 over 8 is equivalent to 5 over 40. Now I can add them together. 16 plus 5 is 21, and my denominator is 40. So my answer is 21 over 40. Always do the check to see if you can simplify. Is there a number that divides into 21 that goes into 40? And then this instance, no, there isn't. Let's look at our next problem, which is 2 fifths plus 1 sixth. So I have 2 over 5, and I need to add 1 over 6. 5 and 6, apples and oranges, I can't add them. So the first number they you come to that they both go into is 30, the lowest common denominator. So our answer is going to involve fractions with a denominator of 30. What did I do to get from 5 to 30? Well, I multiplied it by 6. So I need to multiply our numerator by 6. So 2 times 6 is 12. So the fraction 2 over 5 is the same value or equivalent to the value 12 over 30. Let's have a look at the next fraction. I've got 1 6. What did I get do to get to from 6 to 30? I multiplied it by 5. So I need to do the same to the numerator. So 1 times 5 is 5. So the fraction 1 over 6 is the same value as the fraction 5 over 30. Now we can add them together. 12 plus 5 is 17, and they're over the denominator of 30. Can I simplify it? No, 17 is a prime number, and it doesn't go into 30. So I can save wasting brain power and time in the exam and leave my answer as 17 over 30 because it does not simplify. Let's look at the next problem, which is 1 eighth plus 3 quarters. So I have 1 eighth and I need to add 3 quarters. Well, the first number that they come to that they both go into is 8. So our common denominator is going to be 8 and we're going to add them together. Well, 1 eighth is already a denominator of 8, so 1 eighth does not change. What we need to change is the 3 quarters. What did I do to get from 4 to 8? I multiplied it by 2. So I need to do the same to the numerator. 3 times 2 is 6. Now we can add the fractions together because we have the same denominator. So 1 plus 6 is 7 and the denominator is 8. So our answer is 7 over 8 and it cannot be simplified. Our final question that we need to deal with is 1 6 plus 3 quarters. So I have 1 6 and I need to add 3 quarters. What is our lowest common denominator? What's the first number when you're doing the multiples of 6 and 4 that you come to? Well, it's actually 12. So our lowest common denominator is the number 12. And we're going to add them together. So what did I do to get from 6 to 12? I multiplied it by 2. So I need to do the same to my numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 over 12 is exactly the same fraction as 1 over 6, just written in a different way. It's equivalent. Let's do the same for the 3 quarters. What did I do to get from 4 to 12? I multiplied it by 3. So to get from 4 to 12, I multiplied it by 3. I need to do the same to my numerator. So 3 times 3 is 9. So I can now add them together because I have a common denominator of 12 and 2 plus 9 is 11 and we can't simplify it. So my answer for my final square is 11 over 12. And that is our Arithmagons complete.